Morgan Stanley Wealth Management Chief Investment Officer Lisa Shallot joins us this morning. Lisa, great to have you back. Good morning. Great. Good to see you, Carl. We've been looking for signs that this run-up would cause Morgan Stanley's house view to pivot. You have been quite resolute. We, we, we're highly convicted uh, that ultimately we maybe uh, have been early, but we're still not convinced that we're wrong, that earnings achievability and the hockey stick earnings forecasts that are baked in for 2024 are just too optimistic. And they're really based on people believing not just in the resilience of the economy, but the sustainability of profit uh, margin levels that were really enhanced by a pull forward in demand and very high prices and pricing power. Uh, even the data this morning that we saw, you know, with the positive revisions to real GDP uh, suggests that, you know, in the first quarter, while companies did, quote unquote, beat the expectations, they had a tailwind of 7 percent nominal top line growth, which is 2 percent real plus 5 percent inflation. Uh, so it, we're still running a very, very hot economy. That nominal GDP at 7% is well above where the Fed is right now. So, it, you know, interestingly, what we're looking at right now uh, is not just, you know, the achievability of earnings, which has been the focus of, of people kind of pointing the finger and saying, hey, you guys are going to be wrong. Right, right. Uh, is we're, now, we're now looking at multiples and price earnings multiples. And the, the variable we're looking at this morning is the 10-year real rate. Uh, which has really busted up through uh, 1.6 percent. That 10-year real rate typically is pretty well correlated with the price-earnings ratios uh, of the NASDAQ. Does that, uh, and so we, go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry, I was going to say, does that mean or imply that you could raise your earnings target of 185 but yet keep your overall view on, on equities for the year? Yeah, I think that that's the right interpretation of what I'm saying, is that one way or the other, we think we're going to hit a wall here uh, with markets, that if it's not earnings that disappoint, it's the higher but longer interest rates that actually pressure uh, valuation multiples down closer to something around, uh, you know, 17, 18 times and not 20 times. Why do you think it's the higher for longer narrative that will ultimately be the catalyst for pressure to the downside? The reason I ask is because at the beginning of this cycle, we heard so much about it was, you know, the velocity of rate increases. And that's going to be kind of the damper for especially companies that have yet to turn profit. Um, you know, now that we have or once we do have some clarity into kind of where interest rates are, won't that help, you know, at least modeling for some people out there? Look, I think un understanding and having some clarity about the direction of Fed policy um, certainly helps us understand, um, you know, how the Fed is thinking and, and uh, you know, but it also has, helps us set levels. If you look at most people's models and you look at what a 20 times forward price earnings valuation implies, it implies that most people are assuming that the current level of interest rates is absolutely temporary and that we're returning to a 10 year treasury that over the long term hovers around two to two and a half percent. If that needs to get reset in everyone's models for those long duration assets, which are what secular growth stocks are, they're long duration assets and you've got to discount those future cash flows at 3.5% or 4% because that's the new long-term interest rate. That's a material change to your valuation multiple and things look a lot more normal like a 17 times market, not a 20 times market.